Program Decisions here, and today I have something for the auditors because oftentimes I hear these crazy stories, or sometimes I even watch them on YouTube, where the auditor is told some crazy stuff, like you have to delete the footage. Now, here's what makes this real interesting to me because I want you to go through a few things because there was this guy in 2017. Last name was Turner, Turner V Driver. And it was one of those cases that actually set up or kind of reinforced, clearly established. But it was also something that was reinforced by the Open Government Act of 2000, blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm gonna put it up anyway, so you'll see it. And it's, filming the police contributes to the public's ability to hold the police accountable Ensure that police officers are not abusing their power and to make informed decisions about police policy. Now, you also remember a couple videos back, I actually did a video that spoke about being able to get police policy upon request. Now, filming the police also frequently helps officers because a lot of times what they're doing, when I talk about this 76% of video that does not get turned in in cases that involve police officers from police officers. They generally come from a bystander, somebody with some stuff like myself with a nice little gimbal got going on. And these videos are generally what people have to kind of dictate or determine what it is that an officer can or can't do. Because a citizen's recording might corroborate a probable cause finding, which they seldom do, or might even exonerate an officer's charge with wrongdoing. Now, the problem is you have these officers that go out and attack these auditors. I went over another case, Glick v. Cuffin, because recording the actions and activities of police officers in the performance of their public duties is a form of speech to which individuals may gather and disseminate information of public concern. Now, recording of any police activity performed in public or where an individual otherwise has a legal right to be present. You often see, because even, I'm gonna put a video here, just give you part of the video. A father was filming a police officer while the officer was arresting his son. The officer then tackled the dad. The dad then sued for wrongful arrest. The dad won the lawsuit because he's allowed to be there. And there was another one that I talked about that Phil versus the city of Philadelphia. I just got tongue tied because I'm reading now. But it also established that this is your constitutional right to actually view these idiots when they're not doing what they're supposed to do. Because I use that terminology in this case simply because oftentimes we're not dealing with someone that is doing their job properly. We're watching bystanders restrict folks, such as in the George Floyd case, where an officer actually was holding the crowd back and then telling people they had to stop filming. Why? Because we very, it took what, six months before we got actual video footage from the police officers? Because there was so much scrutiny behind it but now you have those that were acting in concert to assist in someone's death. And then they wanna be upset with us for filming it. Because the one thing that most people don't understand is, cause I, I get it. You don't, as a police officer and you're trying to secure a scene, because that's what it's called, securing a scene, because you're wanting to maintain chain of custody for evidence. And you wanna make sure that those that are violating law, goodness, man. Those that are violating are, are held responsible for their actions. The problem with that is a reasonable distance must be maintained from the officers engaged in the enforcement or related police duties. Most people have no clue what that is because there's no real definition of it. However, there are several references to 10 feet from the scene unless there are exceptions. 
not going to go through that today. But understanding, maintaining a reasonable distance, generally 10 feet or more, where the officer can perform their duties. And generally what I would do is I would, if I'm going to record, I'm going to get in their line of sight just so they can not have any excuses for doing anything outside of their duties. In US v. Warrior, and it's a 2013 case, the police generally may not, without a warrant, search for digital information on a cell phone seized from an individual who is arrested. Now, why did I throw that one in there when I'm talking about an auditor? Well, like I said, I'm on a gimbal. And a lot of the auditors use these things. And yeah, this is actually pretty neat. But they're using their cell phone because the cell phones, as you can see, this is a crispy picture. And this is actually the front camera. So when you're looking at it, it looks great. The footage is awesome. And it's steady and it's steel. And it gives you a great quality. So this is what most people are using when they're filming the police. Generally, the police will do something like delete the footage. Without exception, police may not destroy or delete audio and video recordings or order the person engaged in recording or a third party to delete or destroy such recordings, whether they are obtained with a warrant or through a bona fide exception to the warrant requirement. An officer cannot implicitly or explicitly threaten or coerce the individual. The threat or actual arrest is a violation. Remember, I just put up a video about wrongful arrest. It qualifies as coercion. You remember the thing that voids a contract. Verbal contracts is this when officers are doing their service. We also spoke about show of authority stops. Telling someone or giving someone instruction without a crime is a Fourth Amendment violation via Terry v. Ohio because now we're going into the realm of show of authority stops. Because if you're giving instructions, I just said something, didn't I? If a police officer is giving you instructions and there is no crime, there is a violation of the Fourth Amendment because it is called a show of authority stop and they cannot, absent a crime, offer instructions and they cannot have you destroy evidence because if they do, it is a federal violation. That's what I got for you guys today. I love you. Keep recording. Keep putting the videos up. Go out there. Now go with the knowledge to know. This is what you have to stand on. Not only did I give you information from the Open Government Act, which basically described what a reporter is or someone that's engaged in news or even platforms which label you as a reporter and give you more opportunity to defend yourself when you are encountering these type of situations. Support the channel, support the podcast, grab your t-shirts. Supreme, out.